Donkey today for Monday, May 24th goes to me, Lenard McKelvey. Uh, contrary to popular belief, this is not the first time I've given myself Donkey of the Day because Donkey of the Day does not discriminate. I mean, I may be kind of biased towards certain people, but I, but I don't have any bias. When it you got charged with. You played. You played to. The delinquency. You have a minor bitch. But what you got accused of uh, uh, is. You were. 22. You were. Rape. No, you ain't no rapist. You a delinquency of a minor. Ass nigga. Delinquency of a minor. Minor ass nigga. Now. Now. Uh, Check this out. But you was accused of felonious engagement in P now. Vaginal intercourse with a 15 year old child. Bitch. So just because you go get your white zaddy, like I keep telling everybody you do, bitch, you went and got your white zaddy. And yeah. I may have said something wrong, and I'm sorry. I tried to defame your character, so you say, motherfucker. I retract those statements, but here's the real statements. Motherfucker, you was accused of felonious engagement in penal vaginal intercourse with a 15 year old child. Why were you there, sir? You at least was there, sir, right? Can I say that in front of your attorney? You were present, though, right? Comes to myself. If I'm wrong, if something I do or say doesn't sit right with my spirit, I have to apologize and do better moving forward, and that's what I'm about to do right now. I want to apologize to Kwame Brown and Kwame Brown's family. Ass nigga got a lesser charge of delinquency to a minor. Ain't that better? Ain't that better? Bitch ass nigga. I'm not gonna get up off you, motherfucker. You still gonna get fired. Cause I heard radio. Why do y'all have people that get see a minor? Huh? I want to apologize to his father, Bill Brown, and, and, and the family of his father. See, last week on this radio, and my attempt to defend a Charleston, South Carolina, born brother like my son. You lesser charge ass bitch. You delinquency to a minor ass bitch. That's still wrong. What the fuck you doing around a minor, you punk ass motherfucker? Fuck you and fuck your goddamn lawyers, bitch. Just because you go pay and your motherfucking friends go help you out, bitch. You think that's going to scare me, ho? Fuck you. Charlemagne the hoe. I retract the first statement, but nigga, you a lesser charge ass nigga pleading guilty to a lesser charge. You delinquency to a minor ass nigga should not be speaking on a king like me, bitch. You as a delinquency to minor ass fuck nigga. <laughs> bitch ass nigga. And the girl wanted to reopen the case. But because she did probably didn't have the money back then or whatever else, she tried to start it up again. And your bitch ass lawyers shut them down again. So once again, proving you punk bitch that you protected by the machine, motherfucker. So now that I got all the terminology right, I'm going to still get on your raccoon change of face ass, bitch. The fuck you talking about, nigga? I'm my mama's son and you and your attorney can get my mama's cooking, bitch. Because, nigga, you told about my daddy, and that had nothing to do with me, bitch. So open up your lawsuit, and then I'll open up my defamation of character lawsuit. Fuck, nigga. Fuck you talking about, nigga. You talked about other people when referencing me. And I ain't say shit about you, punk bitch. And no other time you ever mentioned my name on The Breakfast Club, you punk motherfucker. So you obviously was just trying to defame my character because I talked about your go-along, get-along club, bitch. I told you I was ready and waiting for a pussy-ass nigga like you. I'm not scared of you or your machine. Fuck y'all. I told you. Only thing y'all like to do is control people's mind. But bitch, I is free. And you niggas gonna keep making me spit this gospel. You better leave me the fuck alone. Now, if you want me to shut up on your ass, then help me build these programs for these kids around America. That's when I shut up. Motherfucker. Uh, I revealed too much information about that man's family, and even though all that stuff is public record, some things just don't need to be said on the radio, and they definitely don't need to be said by me when I look back. You know, on the way I communicated that, I communicated it all wrong, and I unintentionally triggered trauma in a lot of folks I grew up with who yeah, I genuinely nigga. love. I'm sure oh, I caused a lot of pain for not only Kwame Brown, but for his family, minor. especially yeah, his family in my hometown in Monk Point, South Carolina. You know how I know? Because I spoke to a few of them. I've been on the phone this weekend with, with, with mothers of children. And their children. Uh, salute to Shalita. Reba and her daughter, Brianda. 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 I was on the phone with uh, sisters like... Uh, Wallet, salute to... Wallet. Oh, she... Correct me out good. 
And, you know, I was apologizing for triggering them. I was in pain because I was casually discussing their family's trauma, man. And, and that's something that I have to stop doing. That's something that we all have to stop doing. I was talking to my sacred purpose coach. I have y'all this week. She's like a spiritual child, therapist. Bitch. I have her in my clinical therapist. And that's what we were talking about. How, how we casually discuss each other's traumas. I didn't even think about when I spoke on you know, Kwame and his family, how many people were impacted by those things I was speaking on. I mean, that's... That's, that's generational. Okay, I... I caused pain and... Unintentionally... Unintentionally... Poked it. Ass nigga. Got a lesser charge of delinquency to a... Minor. Ain't that better? Ain't that better? Bitch. Ass nigga. Not no... Get up off you, motherfucker. You still gonna... Get fired. Cut... Uh, I heard... Radio. Why do y'all have people... Get to see of a minor. Huh? Those wounds, okay, wounds that will probably never heal. And I can't take back those words, but I can't apologize. You know, I think oftentimes we, meaning black people, we fight each other with our demons, whether true or false, whatever is the worst thing we know about a person or think we, I think we know about a person, we default to that. And that was not my intention. I was not in any way, shape, or form trying to paint Kwame in a negative light, okay? That black man is not my op. He wasn't my op when I said it. In my mind, I'm defending that man, but I should have been defending him as Leonard Charlemagne the God McKelvey, the professional, and not Leonard Larry. Whatever you want to call me from Monk's Corner, South Carolina, talking like I'm home in the town on why I believe they need to leave Kwame Brown alone. That was whack. Because the conversation didn't even have to go there. The conversation should have been about basketball. Yes, leave Kwame Brown alone because he achieved the goal and a dream that 1.3% of NCAA seniors will achieve an 0.03 percent of high school seniors you know what I mean? small a number that is and you know just that's just simply being drafted in the nba if you play 13 seasons and make 65 million dollars you're a success yes. okay if you work th 13 years anyway and make that kind of money you're a successful well, salute to that man the only expectations we have, have to live up to was our own that's why i always say success is subjective okay my views of success may be different than yours as long as you're happy that's all that matters. But we didn't even get into that conversation because my mind automatically went to something that didn't that it didn't even have to go to. And doing that, I unintentionally caused trauma. And since I unintentionally caused trauma, I have to be intentional about causing healing. I'm not about to sit around and have beef with another black man for nothing. Trust me. Y'all know. I have a lot of real enemies who are gunning for me every day. Kwame Brown is not going to be one of them. Okay. I totally understand why Kwame Brown was upset at me. I went low. That wasn't my intention. But in hindsight, it was low, and Kwame took it to the floor with me. And y'all be online so excited, ready to see black people go back and forth and tear each other down. I'm not doing that. I'm not going back and forth if I feel like I wronged somebody. I'm going to apologize. That's what I think a good man does. A good man apologizes for the mistakes, you know, that he made. But a great man corrects them. Hopefully, I get the opportunity to do that one day. But for now, I just apologize. And I'm not beefing with a black man who's born where I was born and has family where I'm from. There's nothing on this planet that I love more than God, my family, and Monk's Corner, South Carolina, the whole low country, the 843. Dropping a clues box for the 843. Okay? So when I say I sincerely apologize to Kwame Brown and his family and the family of Bill Brown and Monk's Corner, I mean that. Only thing I'm responsible for is my energy and recognizing my own insanity. And Eckhart Tolle once said, to recognize one's own insanity is, of course, the arising of sanity, the beginning of healing and transcendence. I truly believe if trauma can be passed down through generations, then so can healing. Me? Leonard McKelvey, I have never claimed to be perfect. In fact, I'm far from it. I'm not going to always get it right. The same things people listen to me for is the same things they hate me for because I talk too much. I overshare. I overshare about myself. I overshare about others. And that is historic. We got me in trouble. But we are all works in progress. And one of the most healing things you can do is recognize where in your life you were your own poison. And last week I was poisoned. The Kwame Brown, Bill Brown. And their families. For that, I sincerely apologize. Uh, please let Remy Ma give me Leonard McKelvey, Charlemagne the God, the biggest hee-haw. Hee-haw, hee-haw, you stupid mother are you dumb? Yes, indeed. What's up? You're welcome to the scene. And I'd like to welcome you to the hood.